I'm too full for this. Why did I make three? Hello everyone, my name is Lisa, and I'm the Viet Vegan because I'm Viet and I'm vegan. And this channel has been a little dormant. I've only posted like two videos in the last month because life threw some sh in my direction and I caught it with my freaking face. So I thought I would do a little chill mukbang to get things back on track and then just to kind of update you guys on like what's going on. So I have three noodle packs. Um, they are from the... Australian snack swap that I did with Liz Mew. I'm trying to like eat less ramen because I am conscious as to how much plastic and palm oil is in <laughs> those noodles. Even though they are vegan, they're still not great. This one over here is curry flavored. Looks pretty good, but I probably added a bit too much water. Oh, also spilled some on the table, no problem. So this is the Maggie curry flavored or curry flavored. This is oriental flavor. I don't know what that's supposed to be, but when I smelled the seasoning packet, I was brought back to my childhood days of eating raw Mr. Noodles. Uh, my favorite was the oriental flavor. And this one here is chicken flavor. I think I added too much water, but it looks like a very like watery chicken noodle soup. I'm gonna eat noodles today. I don't know if I'm gonna eat all of them. I'm pretty hungry. I haven't eaten anything solid yet today. I also have some tofu because nutrition, <laughs> but this is some smoked tofu and I put some sriracha on it. Mm. We're gonna chill today. We're gonna eat some noodles. It's gonna be a long one. So if you don't have a snack already, I highly recommend you get one or drink. All right, so I've tried this one. I actually quite like this one. I haven't tried these though. That tofu is so good, but dang, it takes a long time to chew. So I'm gonna dive into the curry one first. Let's taste a little bit of everything before I, you know, get into this. So if you guys haven't watched that snack swap with Liz Mew, well, not with her, it's from her. I'll link the video in the corner. I also have another noodle taste test with Eddie talking about like what made him go vegan. And uh, you guys seem to really like that. So I'm back at it again, just by my lonesome because Eddie's at work today and I guess technically so am I. Mm. It's like a super clean but curry flavor. It's just like a spice. Super good. I'm actually really happy with the amount of water that I put in because I don't know if you guys noticed yet, I love salty things, but I have a pretty low sodium threshold. Things get really salty for me really quickly. So. Mm. I am not gonna finish all these noodles, but you know what, it's okay. This one's the oriental flavor. Very excited to try this one. These noodles are like typical wheat noodles. They're like not my favorite. I prefer the Maggie noodles, or not Maggie, the mama noodles, which are like Thai. Those are so freaking good. Those are like my childhood. The artificial chicken and artificial pork, I believe are vegan. And they also have a veggie one. And then the shrimp one is the one that you cannot eat because there's shrimp powder in there. The instructions say to cook this on the stove, but they're instant noodles. You can just pour boiling water on them. It's fine. I don't know what oriental flavor is. Tastes like soy sauce. It's like soy sauce and MSG and like some aromatics. Yeah, I don't really like these noodles. <laughs> I'm like so spoiled by like other kinds of noodles now. I have those um, Nongshi noodles. Oh frick, those are so good. They're so chewy. Ugh, so tasty. Um, I have a really old video about how I like usually spruce up my ramen, but I figured I'd have them, you know, plain for you guys to see them in their natural glory. That one's just kind of okay. All right, time for the chicken. Some uh, electric chicken flavor. It's really hot. Oh my god, I forget. You know what this tastes like? This tastes like Lipton's like chicken noodle soup with like five noodles, <laughs> except with ramen noodles. I'm pretty into this actually. Ow, that was again very hot. I don't know why I did that. I'm gonna dive in onto my tofu again. I don't. It's cold. I don't know why I blew on it. All right, so far. I like this one the best, this one's second best, and this one, it's just kind of okay. Swappy swap. And I guess I'll start chatting about what the heck happened to me in the last month. So I haven't really mentioned a lot about this on here ever, but I don't have a relationship with my dad. Well, I didn't have a relationship with my dad for the past like three years. I tried for a really long time to like find good things about my dad and to try to find like the positive in him. And honestly, he just didn't have a very good character. Like he just didn't really care about my mom or my brother or me, which was like, you know, it sucks when your dad doesn't give a shit about you. I cut him out of my life maybe three or four years ago, probably around the same time that Eddie and I started dating. So that's like four years ago. So I hadn't really seen him since my grandma died 
in Vietnam and I went to temple for her like three years ago. Um, there's like a really old video of Eddie cooking rice and that's the day that I went to um, her temple funeral thing. Yeah, that was like the last time I had seen them up until just this past summer. A bunch of you guys know that I got married in June, so like that was its own stressful thing. There's a lot of like complicated stuff that I didn't really talk about here because it's family and it's complicated and it's private, but um, I didn't invite my dad to my wedding and a lot of people were really confused and upset and like sort of, they judged me for it and they didn't really know like what the story was with me and my dad. Inhaled some spices. <coughs> Oh, oh my god, there's like curry in my throat. <coughs> Long story short, my dad wasn't invited, uh, and therefore the majority of my family, aside from my mom's side of the family, wasn't invited to my wedding. Fast forward a couple of months, um, my dad was getting really sick. He was given a three month prognosis mid-August. So I went to go see my dad with my brother. My dad didn't say a single word to me, and I didn't say anything to him, but like, you know, whatever. I was there. My dad got really sick. Like his symptoms got super, super bad. He was, he didn't really take care of himself very well. Like he drank, he smoked, he didn't really exercise. He ate a lot of meat all the while during chemo. Fast forward two weeks after the three month prognosis, my dad passed away. And it was really hard for me and confusing because on one hand, I felt like really guilty for cutting him out of my life like that. But at the same time, like, he also made no effort to talk to me or say anything to me. I think he like texted me happy birthday last year and that was the first text I'd gotten him in like four years. And I didn't respond to him because I was like, you found out that I got married and um, I had my tea somewhere you without you. So that was like basically a response to that. But he didn't say anything. He didn't, all he said was happy birthday. I was going through like a lot in terms of trying to understand my grief because I was like, I cried when I saw him at the hospital when he was like dying. I saw him die and like seeing him suffer like that, it like made me really sad and it made me not regret, <clears throat> but I grieved the relationship that we never had. I grieved the fact that like I had a dad, but he wasn't the dad that I wanted or needed. It's been hard because you know, a lot of my friends have these amazing dads, amazing parents. Like I saw my friend recently get married and like the stuff that her dad said about her and that my friends, uh, like her husband, my friend's dad said about him, like they were just so like amazing and so nice. And I, it like really kind of hit home. I was like, wow, I really don't know what it's like to have like a normal, nice dad who gives any inkling or shit about you. <laughs> well, this mukbang got so heavy. <laughs> so my dad passed away at the beginning of September and it's the beginning of October now, so it's about a month later. I was really kind of like a zombie for like two and a half weeks, and then I left for my honeymoon. And because this was like already planned in advance, I was already going up to Montreal for work, but then we had extended it to be our honeymoon because we couldn't afford like a proper, like fly on a big trip, whatever honeymoon. So this was a pretty bare bones honeymoon. I have a vlog for it, but I missed the first like day and a half of footage, which I'm really sad about, so. I'll have to piece together a vlog for you guys so you guys can see like what we ate because there's a lot of really good stuff. Of course, I lost the footage of like my favorite meal. <laughs> Dang it, I'm so mad. I've mentioned this before, but like my background is obviously Vietnamese and I'm Buddhist. So there's a lot of culture in Buddhism and Vietnamese culture that's like intertwined. So I don't really know if it's Buddhism necessarily or Vietnamese culture. Like don't take me as an authority on like my traditions because I don't know if it's Buddhist or it's a Vietnamese thing. Anyone who is Vietnamese and Christian or Catholic uh, or not religious or whatever, um, if you have a lot of these similar traditions, I would love to hear about it. So in Buddhist culture or like belief, tradition, I don't really know exactly, um, but the concept is that it takes 49 days for the soul to pass on to the next. I don't know what the actual obligation is, but because my parents are divorced, but my mom is such a good person, she showed up like a wife would. And as my dad's oldest, it was like a lot of my responsibility to like do the prayer. There's like a white band that indicates that you're mourning. So there are seven Sundays of mourning. Basically consists of going to temple and I go to a Buddhist, Buddhist temple. I think it's supposed to be the oldest boys or like all the boys are supposed to wear like a white, it's like a band, basically. It's like a headband. Pray for your parent so that they can move on to the next life. But because my brother is like the only son who lives here in Canada, both he and I were the ones who were mourning. And like, I've had a little bit more experience in terms of like prayer or whatever than my brother. So I was basically there. Anyway, I, 
One of the children have to be there for seven weeks, so seven Sundays. We just finished week five. Next Sunday is week six, and the Sunday after is the final. Um, and seventh Sunday. A lot of my family don't know my history with my dad and they didn't understand, but I have been going to these seven Sundays, um, except for the one where I went on my honeymoon, just to like be there for my mom. And so that like, I don't know if I believe in the seven Sundays or like, you know, if that's really effective at all. I don't necessarily believe that my dad deserves like what I'm doing, but I'm doing it because it's just easier to do it than it is to not do it. Like I'd rather just do it than receive like all the judgment and flack and whatever to my dad. And in, in the off chance that, you know, this actually does something or means something in the end, I'll have like a better conscious knowing that I just did it anyway. It has helped me grieve because I've kind of seen other people around me because I'm obviously not the only one who's like lost someone. I'm like surrounded by all these Vietnamese people. I feel a little bit more connected to my community and mostly just my family. I, like I've seen family that I had avoided because of the risk that I would see my dad at those family functions. It just made me realize like how much I missed that side of my family because they're like super fun and super dope and like they're like wild. These noodles are so soggy, they are not good no more. <laughs> I'm so sad. Okay, you know what? I take it back. I like the oriental slightly better than the chicken. This one was good, but it's like, it really just tastes like Lipton's chicken noodle soup. That's been my life. And like, I've been trying to like get back into fitness and like trying to get my blog back on track, but it was really hard to like develop recipes that made me happy or like listen back to like footage where like I'm laughing and giggling and having like a wonderful time when I feel guilty for like hearing that and feeling that and like, it's really weird. So after all this happened, I, I post on Instagram like kind of like what happened and like that I was kind of disappearing or a little bit. I didn't really know what to do with my life. I didn't know how to really process it. Um, a lot of my friends shared some grief uh, resources, which were actually really nice and helpful. But I think honestly what it was, was just kind of like time and like being okay with the way that I feel and accepting the feelings that like are happening. And like uh, so many people said to me like, you know, there's no wrong way to grieve. And so I did notice myself, trigger warning for anyone who has like history with disordered eating, but I did notice myself like falling back into like restriction um, habits. So it's like a coping mechanism that I've experienced before. Um, although this one was like a lot shorter than the last time, but basically I would avoid eating um, for like days. And like the last time this happened was after I broke up with my ex four years ago, over four years ago. This is just like, just before I met Eddie. And it was like for like three months that I was like basically not eating or like I was eating one meal a day and it wasn't a very like, nutritious meal. It was like bare, bare bones. I felt myself falling back into that same sort of like restriction control over like what I'm eating and how I look in my body sort of situation. And like recently I have had family tell me that I'm fat, which is like, ah, uh, it's whatever. It's been sort of a process for me to like sit back, be mindful of like what I'm doing and how I'm processing things and what thoughts are going through my mind. I've been like, hey, wait a second, don't do that get to the root of like what is causing you to feel this way. This is probably too much information for YouTube, but basically last year, my mom got cancer. This year, my dad got cancer. He died. I don't know how to process. I've been obsessed with my health lately. I'm not sure if I'm afraid of dying. I feel like with the way that I eat normally, not like this, <laughs> I am okay health-wise. I exercise regularly. I eat fairly healthy. I eat fairly balanced. I haven't done a proper what I eat in a day for you guys to like see what I eat normally from like day to day and not just like going out to eat. F it. I am finally able to like sleep and wake up normally and not feel dead and lethargic and like a zombie. Cause for like three weeks, I was really like out of it. I don't know if it was depression or if it's just grief or it's whatever, but my body like shut down. I'm okay now. It's taken me some time. Um, I have a lot of really fun recipes that I want to get out for you guys. I finally want to finish my bun sale recipe and like put it out for you guys. I have a bunch of really delicious recipes I want to work on for cookbook. And I have some really fun video ideas with Janelle coming up. We want to do like Filipino recipes, but vegan, uh, which is really exciting because Filipino food is very heavy on meat. <laughs> it's like a lot more difficult to veganize than uh, Vietnamese food, but if possible, I think it can happen. That's been my life. I'm dealing with a little bit of acne. I didn't feel super great after my last video where I talked about how I'm a vegan. I had people not attacking me, but like someone said that I didn't have 
vibrance. I wasn't radiant enough and I wasn't healthy because I wasn't radiant. Okay, sorry, I'm not radiant enough for you. Um, I've had people talk about how chapped my lips are. This has happened since the very beginning of my channel. My lips are a weird color in the daylight. They're basically like the same color as my face, but like slightly grayer. <laughs> and it's not because they're chapped. Sometimes they are chapped, but that's not, the, that doesn't explain the color. That's just the color of my lips. Um, they look pink here. I don't know what it is with these lights, but in daylight specifically, I don't know what daylight does to my lips, but basically my lips look like dead and purple and gray. I can't really do anything about that other than put on lipstick or like there's times where I put on lip balm before I record a video and like people will still make comments about how chapped or like dry my lips look and I'm like, they just my lips, man. <laughs> I'm pretty sure someone also made comments about bags under my eyes. Y'all, I'm 29. Sometimes I don't sleep enough, you know? It happens. I'm human. <laughs> I'm not like a beauty blogger. I'm not like a model. I'm just a regular person with regular problematic skin. And that's something that I find really bothers me about the vegan space where people think that if you eat vegan, your skin will like go super clear and perfect. Your hair will be so totally amazing. You'll lose all the weight and you'll look like a goddess. That didn't happen to me. And I'm not gonna lie, it's probably not gonna happen to you unless you eat super, super healthy compared to how you were eating before. Like if you ate, nothing but like McDonald's every day and takeout and garbage, didn't exercise, didn't do any skincare, and then you went vegan and started taking care of yourself and taking care of your body. Yeah, there'll be a drastic difference, but I wasn't that unhealthy before I went vegan and I've always kind of eaten the same way. A little bit of junk food, a little bit of vegetables, a little bit of whole foods, then a little bit more, you know, takeout. I've had people say that like, you should change your blog name to the, the junk food vegan, blah, 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 blah. And to those people, I say, no. Like it doesn't bother me so much as the fact that it frustrates me that people have these expectations of me and of other vegan influencers. We just regular people, okay? I have acne, I have dry skin, I had eczema before I went vegan. I still have eczema now. I've tried going gluten free. I can't go raw, I'm allergic to too many things. It is what it is, okay? This batch of noodles is not nearly as good as the last batch of noodles. Those noodles were dope. I clearly knew that I wouldn't be able to tackle at least three today, so I'm glad I didn't make four or five packs of noodles because that would have just been absurd. I have been humbled by the curveballs that life has thrown at me, and I've realized that like, after like three or four years of pushing myself to like a lot of stress and making my skin freak out, my body, like I've, I've become a lot more accustomed to like listening to my body and being like, okay, my body does not want me to move my hands for three days. My body does not want me to be able to focus. So I need to just like rest, sit back, do what I can do, but just like not get super frustrated myself for not being able to do things I wish I could do and just accepting where I am in my journey of productivity. I have had to learn that like being pr productive does not make me a better person. Being productive does not dictate my value as a person. Just deal with it. So anyway, my battery is dying. I need to wrap this up. But that's basically what's been up with my life lately. I feel pretty good. I'm happy. I'm really grateful for Eddie. Eddie has been amazing through all of this. He's been so supportive and so nice and so caring and loving. I honestly like couldn't have asked for a better partner. Like I, sometimes I don't understand what I did to deserve someone as wonderful as Edward. And I'm just very grateful for who I have in my life, what I have in my life, the privilege that I have of being able to like eat noodles on camera and talk to you guys about what the f is happening in my life. Hopefully more recipes coming soon, more videos coming soon. I've been streaming a lot more on Twitch. So if you guys wanna watch me, I'll leave a link down below. You can join the Discord as well. We talk about food, life, plants, memes. It's a good time. And yeah, I just wanna say a big thank you for being here and um, accepting where I am in terms of how much video and content I'm putting out. Um, I appreciate you. Um, I post a lot more on Instagram than I do here. So if you guys want to follow me on Instagram, it's the vegan. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are amazing and so supportive and I really appreciate you. And I definitely do not take you guys for granted. So thank you so much. If you like this video, give it a like, comment down below. Let me share, share whatever your thoughts are on any things that I talked about in terms of grief, death, family, self-worth, productivity, whatever. Um, and subscribe if you want to see more videos from yours truly. So thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys have a delicious day. Bye bye Cause uh, life through them, through them. So, oh God. Good Lord.